Um, all right, can you guys see my screen? Can you yeah. see this? All right, yeah. sweet. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Joe, and I'll talk about my final project and then the manufacturing and fabrication part of it, and you guys can give me some feedback for it. Um, where is the U? All right. So for my project, I decided to go with a disc golf cart. It's something that I really enjoy doing as a hobby, playing disc golf and uh, we had like a quick turnaround time between the upcycle project and the final project. So I didn't really know what I wanted to build. So I just thought of some hobbies I like doing this medic and build. So starting off, I like tell about my inspiration and like the thought process of what I needed to do. Uh, I really thought I'd want to do something that was useful, specifically after this class was over that I could use forever. And uh, again, quick turnaround time. So I thought about my hobby that I could use. And uh, right now I have a disc golf bag, but it's pretty, uh, Kind of bulky and not super comfortable to ever wear so i decided to build a disc golf cart um so here's the design process and the goals i ended up wanting to build so uh, i really wanted to have an existing bag i really decided to build like a frame work around that bag that i can already use and then have it be mobile um, on the left of the screen you can see some sketches and uh, math that i drew up to see how i wanted it to look and then the aesthetics part that I really wanted, I wasn't really sure what I wanted, but maybe something like American or camo. At that time, I couldn't really decide. Um, so I ended up getting all my material, mostly from online. I've got about 14 feet of extruded aluminum. I have some pictures of it later on that you can look at it. But I got all of that from a McMaster car and then also all the parts besides the metal fastenings and specific aluminum I got from Lowe's when I was back home after COVID hit. So like the wheels, axles, and then like, uh, and the picture on the right side, I built, I bought myself like a diamond cutting blade that can cut through aluminum myself using my circular saw that I own, as well as some tap and die sets so I can screw the pieces together since I don't have a welder at my house. Um, fabrication. So here on the right side are some pieces of aluminum that I ended up cutting myself. Um, it was pretty kind of long actually. So there's probably about 20 specific pieces of aluminum I had to cut myself and each part had to get filed down to flat. And then if you look on the picture on the right side right here, it's uh, it's hollow on the inside. And I used a tap and die set to put in some screws on the inside so I can screw these pieces together. Uh, it took me about two weeks to build. Each day that I worked on it, I spent about two hours each day on it. Um, what I would do is I'd take my circular saw, clamp down my aluminum, saw off the specific length that I wanted, and then filed it down, and then, uh, once I filed it down, then I tapped a oh, screw and then made sure it would work and then added it to my to my frame pretty much. So I have a bunch of pictures just pretty much starting from the beginning and showing what I ended up building. Uh, this is all done in my garage at my house. So it, the workspace was better than I had previously at my at school because I just had my apartment uh, apartment like desk that I had to work on. This time I actually have my garage. So that's pretty nice. So here's like a clamp and me. Uh, putting in some screws. This is me. Uh, that's a big file that I was using by hand. And this is a uh, part of the aluminum frame that I was building. Here's another picture of some parts that I had built together. So here, right here on these corner pieces, those are uh, uh, pieces that I got from McMaster car, but it allows me to have like three points of contact. So I can have like a, an end piece on the bottom for the golf cart. Uh, moving on, this is inside my house, me framing up my bag around the frame that I was building. Over here is the middle one. This is pretty much the frame coming together and then putting the back on the edge. Here is the finished like original frame that in the building. I have uh, two cross beams on the bottom because my bag has little like pegs. And so the front pegs can fit in this front slot and the back peg can fit on this back slot so the bag won't slide around. Um, here's where my main drift away from the original project happened is right over here. So I really wanted to like have some sort of like acrylic side paneling or plexiglass or something, but I already spent like $150 of raw parts for this project. So I didn't really want to spend any more money. And then since I was at my house, I didn't really have places I can go to go buy any of it. So I just went around and found a lot of old strings. So to look closely, I pretty much just did some webbing patterns on the back. 
and on the side of the cart. And then here is a steel shaft for an axle. I uh, tapped some outside screws on the outside and then got some lawnmower wheels and put some space on the outside. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a close-up picture of the wheels, but I have little spacers on either side that should be evenly spaced between the back of the cart. And the next slide should probably have the last three pictures, I think, yeah. So I pretty much finished attaching the wheels to the front side, added some front pegs, uh, made also made out of aluminum and rubber bottoms, pretty much used to keep the, keep the frame balanced. This was just uh, something in the future I want, might want to do is because right now I have the, the, the corners exposed. I mean, the metal's all filed down and smooth, but it's still just exposed kind of corner metal. So I really want to maybe put, I don't know, some sort of flex seal or something on the edge. But then uh, I got a snow shovel. I bought a steel shovel handle actually from Walmart for like five bucks. It was steel. It's pretty cool. I took off the front peg and it was just the perfect length I needed to use. So I drilled some holes in that and then uh, put the screws on the aluminum. I was able to attach the handle pretty much. And then the last picture right here is uh, my bag and uh, pretty much the finished product, what you can see right there. Uh, in conclusion, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. I thought I could uh, a lot better than I thought I could make on my own just by myself at my house. Um, it, it's pretty sturdy. I was able to actually sit on it and my dad is actually able to like wheel me around in the bag too. I thought that was pretty funny. But uh, being stuck at home, I decided to use paracord netting on the sides instead of using plexiglass or acrylic. Um, I think it met my goal functionally as well as aesthetics. I mean, it wasn't American per se, but if I wanted to, I can add like fabric or pockets on the side because I made sure I can have space for like water bottles or like uh, here's an umbrella and some other stuff on the side just in case I needed it. So I can also add like side pockets if I needed to. So it's just, it's finished for now and it's working. I went on the course the other day to play and it worked fine, but it's still like technically open for more improvement right now just because of the way it's built. So um, yeah, as I just said right here, I can add to the back and sides later if I feel like it, adding more rope or fabric to the sides. So that's pretty much all I have for the project, project right now. Uh, are there any questions? Nice job, Joseph. That was some really resourceful engineering. I was Thanks. really impressed with how the final product looked. Um, Thanks, man. The use of the shovel I found particularly interesting. Uh, just because you use what you had and it actually it turned out really well so good job um, any other statements of meaning for joseph uh, maybe questions from you then for us um, yeah, is there any like improvements or like design choices you think I could have done that I can add to it? Because right now it's still like, it works and everything, but like, it still looks kind of framey. I kind of want it to be a little more of a finished pro polished project. So is there anything you guys think I could add to it maybe that could help it? You, you could add fabric uh, to the outside if you wanted to and give it more of a closed off look if, if that's what you're looking for um but i was also going to throw this out there what about a, a cup holder of some sort yeah i thought about that i just didn't have one at my house at the time so i'll have to right. add that later but that's actually a really good point uh i would also suggest if you don't want to use fabric maybe you can uh, use some acrylic color the acrylic to give it a nice and sturdy touch and 3d the cup holder which would be the easiest if that works with you. Yeah, 3D print, is that what you're saying? For the cup holder? Yeah, 3D print the cup holder and laser cut some acrylic sheets with the colors that you like. For sure. Yeah, I'll have to probably wait till I have access to a 3D printer, but yeah. that sounds good, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Joseph? When you took it out on the course, what what did you did you find any kind of pain points or anything, any areas for improvement in terms of functionality? Yeah, I think functionality worked actually 
better than I thought. It was super sturdy. I could, it was actually brought on a kind of an off-road kind of course. Like there wasn't very many like actual paths. It was all like on the ground and rocks and stuff. So it was actually sturdy throughout all that. Um, but one of the issues I realized that building it out of aluminum, it got a little heavy. There's some points where I had to like go up a steep hill. So I was kind of lugging it up the hill and it was kind of annoying. But besides that, I think it was doing really good. Uh, so maybe in the future, I was like, I mean, this is a prototype, but like if I were to build another one, I'll probably build it out of maybe lighter material, but something else. Yeah. I was wondering what you would describe the final aesthetic of your piece as if you weren't able to really fully go for the American flag or the camo look, what would you describe it as now? Um, I have more rope that's probably to use it. So maybe sort of like a canvas rope look. I'm not sure. One of my classmates here for the upcycling project, his name's Davis. He built like a rope rug and had some cool weaving patterns to it. So I was kind of trying to look off his project a little bit. So kind of like a rope look. I'm not sure that's an actual aesthetic, but yeah. It probably is. Ones. Yeah. Any permission opinions? Yeah, go for it. I don't, I think I personally would think it would be cool if you pursued the camo look. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to do that. Probably some sort of fabric. I'm sure painting camo would be difficult, but if you could find some sort of fabric that isn't too expensive to kind of cover the exterior, and I think it'd be really cool. Um, yeah, actually for the Air Force, I'm in the Air Force right now, our uniforms are actually getting phased out. We're doing a different style of uniform next year. And so I have like three sets of uniforms that actually aren't going to be used anymore. So I could actually take my old uniforms and use that for the side paneling actually, which would be pretty interesting. I think that would add another level of meaning and sentimentality to the piece too. Um, mm -hmm. That probably just makes it that much more interesting. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, does yeah. anyone else have anything else? Yes. Um, so I was going to say kind of something along the same lines. I thought you could probably fill out the like back webbing of that cart a bit more. It's like very functional right now, but you could like throw in some more weave or like different color rope, I think. And that would help it kind of become a little bit more professional and finished looking, I thought. But really good job. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas.